you know, I, I tried to get this dealer busted, and I'm dealing with a Detective Terry in um, Seattle Narcotics. <laughs> Welcome back to True Psych Ward. I'm your host, Dr. B. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide. If you've been following my Kurt Cobain coverage, then you will know that my investigations are thorough and exhaustive. That means that sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to put things together, but nevertheless, you should brace yourselves for yet another complicated twist in the Courtney Love story. In today's episode, we'll take a closer look at the death of Seattle Narcotics detective Antonio Terry, yet another friend of Courtney's who was killed under strange circumstances. Well, for this one, I went beyond the titles, articles, and the headlines, and I obtained an exclusive interview that you will only hear on this channel. This is gonna go deep, so buckle up. The authors of Love and Death investigated Terry's death. They interviewed Tom Grant and listened to several taped conversations between Courtney Love and Tom Grant. One of those recordings took place on April 3rd, 1994, when Courtney's talking to Tom about her pleas to the police to bust Caitlin Moore, whom she suspects is having an affair with Kurt. She tells Grant that she once told a detective Terry that she would go in with a wire to try to help entrap Caitlin. In another conversation, Courtney tells Grant that she is intimately familiar with Detective Terry's case investigations, claiming that the detective was onto a really big crack ring that was also a big heroin ring, and that Terry told her that the heroin had come from Woodburn, Oregon. Love and Death goes on to say that Melissa Rossi, who wrote Love's biography Queen of Noise, found an interesting fact that at the time of Terry's death, Terry happened to be investigating the source of the heroin that was found in Kurt's bloodstream when he died. Courtney told Rossi that she felt responsible for Terry's death. However, the authors of the book say that Courtney quietly paid a significant amount of money to Terry's widow in 1994. I lost my husband, Antonio Terry, on the morning of June 4th, 1994. He was just uh, returning to the South Precinct from a by bus uh, downtown and ran into a guy jumping in front of cars off the Swift Albro exit. Antonio pulled ahead of a car on the side and walked back towards them to see what was going on. And he's was recognized as a narcotics cop. And as he heard someone say he's a cop, he started to return to his vehicle and as a result was shot in the back. Um, he was able to return fire, get back in his car, drive to the South Precinct and collapsed in the police parking lot. Buzzy Katzer was actually the first officer that got to him. And he didn't know who he was initially because Antonio was in plain clothes. He was driving a, a plain car, wasn't a police vehicle. And he said, Buzzy, I'm hit. And then everything happened. Uh, next thing I know, in, for, in the early hours of the morning, I got a knock at my door. And my world was just turned upside down. Officer Terry had stopped on the Swift and Albro off-ramp from the I-5 freeway in Seattle to assist four individuals whose Mustang had malfunctioned earlier and had come to a stop 
on the shoulder of the off-ramp. Officer Terry was wearing civilian clothes and drove by the Mustang in an unmarked police car. Quentin Urban then jumped out in front of Terry's car, and what happens next in the story has been sharply disputed. All four were taken into custody and interrogated. Jeremy McAllister and Ira Potts were released, but Quentin Irvin and Eric Smiley were interrogated further by Seattle Police Homicide Unit. That's right, this investigation was also led by none other than the dishonored homicide detective, Don Cameron. Irvin and Smiley's joint trial began in November of 1995 and lasted more than three months. There were 86 witnesses who testified that Irvin jumped out in front of Terry's vehicle, flagging him down, and that Terry stepped to the back of his car with his gun in his hand. Irvin and Terry began arguing. Ira Potts testified he saw Irvin pull a gun from his waistband and then heard gunshots. Irvin then ran to Potts and Smiley, who were hiding behind the Mustang, yelling that he got shot. Potts testified that Eric Smiley did not fire or hold the gun that Irvin had pulled from his waistband. But a detective later testified that Smiley stated in an interview that he took the gun from Irvin, fired it, and then threw the gun away. Smiley did not testify. McAllister was granted immunity from prosecution and was not called as a witness in this trial. The jury deliberated for four weeks, not able to reach a unanimous verdict in Smiley's case. They did, however, unanimously find that Quentin Irvin was guilty of killing Officer Antonio Terry. Irvin was sentenced to 27 years. Smiley was retried and in a second trial was found guilty of first degree murder. He was sentenced to 33 years in prison. Smiley has appealed his case to no avail and he continues to serve his sentence, maintaining his innocence. Correctional complex. This call will be recorded and monitored. An inmate at Monroe Correctional Complex. This call will be recorded and monitored. To accept this call, press 5 now. Yes. Huh. So you were saying, uh. So, so you talked about is 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 the. I would rather you hear my story because, mm -hmm. um, because the, the the narrative you got from that you're getting is from the liars who composed this. So mm -hmm. uh, my story coming from me is accurate. I'm not gonna take nothing away from it. I'm not gonna add nothing to it. If I don't mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna say I don't know. Mm -hmm. And how did Quentin die? Think about it. Well, think about it. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. 